Wednesday, the 13th of October, 2019. Uh, for those who are looking to YouTube, they've changed it all around, so I'm going to have to learn it all over again, the new system. I don't like it anyway. I don't really like change. I like to get into ruts, you know. Well, we are told in by the Apostle Paul that he conferred not with flesh and blood. The Apostle Paul confirms that man did not ordain him or call him to preach the gospel. He did not have a a, uh, a license. <laughs> he was not a part of a denomination. And he went through seminary all right. But it was just like a lot of the seminaries today. It wasn't a biblical seminary. He came up under Gamaliel, a Pharisee of the Pharisee, and he called it dung. <laughs> But his calling was from God. We read Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ. And God the Father who raised him from the dead. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Galatians 1.1, 1, 1, Galatians 1.11-12, 1, and Galatians 15-16. Well, good morning, Nadim, Messiah, and Abdul Aziz. Well, this passage has always given me a great deal of comfort, <laughs> I must say, because my experience was very similar to the Apostle Paul, and that I was not called to preach the gospel by man, or through a seminary, or be approved by a denomination. But I was called to preach and teach by God himself. Notice Paul said he did not confer with flesh and blood. <laughs> okay. God bless you too, Nadim. Um, welcome aboard, Roy Ake. God bless. So I was not called to preach the gospel by man or through a seminary or through a denomination, but was compelled to proclaim the gospel by the Holy Spirit working in me. Many people are sold out to institutions. They go to college, they get a huge student loan then they go on to seminary they work on their master of divinity then they go on and get a PhD or a doctor of divinity degree and they are beholden to the institutions where they got them the Bible says the borrower is servant to the lender <laughs> many people do the same thing with secular education They'll go and get an undergraduate degree from a very prestigious undergraduate college, whatever that may be. And Georgetown University or Columbia University or uh, Notre Dame or, uh, you know, Drake University, whatever. And then they'll go on and get a a graduate degree, either 
in many, many different areas, chemistry, physics, law, um, engineering, whatever. And so they are sold out to those universities that they got their license to conduct business from. <laughs> These institutions of higher learning and also the government and political bodies that they're associated with have certain rules that you must abide by and certain cultural mandates that if you want to be successful, you have to subscribe to these things. Well, this is a major cause for the departure from the Word of God and a false gospel being preached and taught today. If I were entitled this devotional anything, I would entitle it the Gospel of Circumcision. The Gospel of Circumcision. Well, Paul continues to teach and preach against those preaching and teaching another gospel. A perversion of the true gospel of Christ. He says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Which is not another but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. where Paul was coming against those who were preaching circumcision and that they must be circumcised. What he was actually coming against is those who were trying to bring uh, not only the Gentiles, he was trying to bring the people back under law service, the old law service. Welcome aboard Charles Munyon. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed, as we said before, say, say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. And that because false brethren unawares brought in who came in privately to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they may bring us into bondage. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews disassembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. <laughs> Do we see this today? Why is it that people want to put people under the law? You know, one thing that I was taught as a child, welcome aboard Andre Barros. It's good to see you this morning. One thing I was taught as a child was the false doctrine of perfection. You know, if the scripture tells us if we say that we have no sin, we're a liar and the truth is not in us. I have never said I have not struggled with sin. But what I have said is that Christ is who I confess my sins to. And I don't need a priest to confess my sins to. 
there's only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. But what I find, oftentimes the people who want you to openly confess your sins and repent, are holding on to a doctrine of perfection and they have an air about them that they are without sin i never hear them confess their sins <laughs> or admit they're wrong or admit they're in error or admit that they're haughty and proud Man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. By the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. If you're seeking to justify yourself by putting yourself or someone else under the law, you're wasting your time. It won't happen. What can take away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that washes white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we also are found sinners is therefore Christ the minister of sin God forbid for if I build again the things which I destroyed I make myself a transgressor for I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God and I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ liveth in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me I do not frustrate the grace of God for if righteousness can't come by the law then Christ is dead in vain are you a um, proclaimer of bringing people back under the law are you setting yourself up as a priest over other people are you quick to point out everyone else's faults and never point out your own faults? I've been guilty of that. I openly admit it. I don't like it. Richard, I'm sorry, Rahel Pujahati, welcome aboard, Rahel. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain, Galatians 2, 11 through 21. So is this not conclusive evidence that God has not shown grace to everyone? If they are continuing in the old law service, in the circumcision, Paul teaches in detail that we are saved by faith, the faith of Christ, and not the deeds of the law. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? only would I learn of you receive ye the spirit by the word of law or by the hearing of faith are you so foolish having begun in the spirit are ye now made perfect by the flesh you know we we don't make ourselves better by pointing out everyone else's flaws You know, we don't. We're all sinners saved by grace. If we're saved, we're saved by grace. 
Are you made now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain, he, he therefore that minister you, ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doth he do it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of the faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In these shall all the nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. The just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for it, us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through, through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet it be confirmed. No man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. Shut up under the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was the schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son in your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. 
there's a scripture in James that say that it says that if we fail in one point, we're guilty of breaking all the law. I'm paraphrasing. But if we offend in one point, we're guilty of breaking all the law. Christ has not imputed our trespasses unto us. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect in you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Galatians 3, 1 through 29, Galatians 4, 4 through 7, and Galatians 5, 1 through 6. Well, this is something for us to think about this morning. We are not under the law. We're under grace. May God be with you today in a special way. And may we rest wholly and completely in the completed work of Jesus Christ and his imputed righteousness. He will not impute our transgressions to us. And I'm going to read, um, if I can find it here real quick. I want to conclude with this read this many times before but it's really my my testimony um, this morning because we can um, all proclaim this if we're under God's grace let it be understood exactly what I am I'm a sinner saved by grace, just like the Apostle Paul said. I'm a despicable, vile creature who was raised up from the dead. I deserved the wrath of God, but it was placed on Christ instead. When I think of how vile and wretched this poor sinner really is, it gives me pause to wonder how awesome Christ forgives. To suffer, bleed, and die on a cruel rugged tree and cry out while he was dying to forgive a sinner like me what a marvelous act of mercy and kindness he did to me show when I deserved to be cast into hell there to forever go all my praise and worship should sing forth for eternity for Christ bleeding and dying to save a wretched sinner like me well may the good Lord be with you today and may he strengthen you and may his grace shine upon you. It's my prayer. God bless.